If you've never done a Raj applique pattern like this, it is so fun. It is scrap friendly. It is simple. It is happy. It is just a great process. So I'm going to make it in two colorways. What you see are the neutrals all ready to go with the little three colors that go with it. So I've laid it out so I can look and see that all the middles go happily together. Here we have the country colored one all the way done. So this is sewn together and I'm going to show you how we do this and you can do it in bigger sizes if you choose, but I'm going to do it in miniature. There will be three circles on each block. And so you can see I have dark pink, dark blue in a variety of positions. And then all of my neutral squares are cut and they're different color neutrals. And that really does add interest to the quilt. And I'm going to show you two ways to make this. We have a free PDF pattern available that you can use if you like this first method. I personally like the second method better, but it depends on your brain. Different brains like different methods. And so I'm going to show you both methods so you can choose which one you like. So this is freezer paper. I'm cutting the circles, the size we need them on the freezer paper. And I will show you, I'm taking all of the base squares that are the base of the blocks and pulling them down so that I can reach the top three. And I'm choosing the biggest color that's the outside and I'm just going to show you I press that circle on and then I get a pin I pin it together so I can cut both circles two at once out at the same time you need very sharp scissors for this I love that that top scrap is such an odd size that I could only get the circle on this part of it you can use all kinds of scraps for this pattern and they just work I take the freezer paper off the large circle and I get the two base neutrals. I like to do the neutrals in different colors because I just think it adds interest to the quilt. Then it's time to get that medium circle ready. So I'm looking, making sure it fits, and here I go to do the process again. As we get these circles ready, we just cut them and layer them one at a time on the base. And as they are built, we can double check our color sense. Do we like where they are? Do we want to switch them around? Do we think they need a different friend next to them? You're not committed until you sew them down. And so it's really fun to color these blocks up and lay them out and decide if you wanna do some switching and some transferring around. But I love watching them grow. And here we go, trying to center it in the center and see, there I am switching it up. Yeah, I like that better. Okay, they're ready to sew together. But first, I'm going to show you the second method. So here it is. Instead of cutting circles, we're going to cut out squares. And there's the big one that will make the big circle, the middle circle, and the small circle, and you can see the dimensions. And so now I fold them into quarters. So in half, and in half again. And then you just kind of cut in a circle position and you open it up and you just round it out. There's no exactness to this method when you do it this way. You just make it look circle-y enough and it doesn't have to be exact and it's going to look good in the end. And this is my preferred method because if a circle's a little wonky, I don't care. It just makes me happy and I like the process of not having to iron on. If you're too worried, then go ahead and do the iron on method. But this, I just kind of trim corners that look cornery on my circle and here I am doing the very smallest one and you just curve around it cut off any little corners that are bugging you and you pile it on and that is the second method of getting this block together this is my project organizing tub and it is where I like to organize my projects. Sometimes projects take longer than one sitting. So this one is one you can do as you feel like it. So I'm putting it on a cookie sheet, getting it all ready to go. It's with its blocks and here it is. So as I go, I can cut them up and take time. And here I have already done them all. So now they're in my project tin waiting to be sewn together. So it's time to sew. Here we go. It is truly, I just love this part. You just sew in a circle, raw egg on top. This is raw edge applique and you can go in as far from the edge as you're comfortable. This is going to be a miniature so I'm doing it very close to the edge. Maybe an eighth inch or even a little less. Probably about an eighth inch. But if I were doing bigger blocks like I've made baby quilts with this or I've made beautiful throws to go on the back of the couch in this pattern then I would do a quarter inch if it were a bigger size square. But when we're doing miniatures then we do really 
small. So just one, two, three stitch, one, two, three stitch, lift the foot, turn, go around, try not to have any corners as you go. I always sew the biggest one first and then I go in and sew the medium one and that's what you're watching me do. And as you go around, you can see there's patience. I usually put on music or I listen to a movie or a book. You just enjoy yourself. And as you do this, you want to make sure, see how my fingers stay on it? I'm feeling that nothing's scrunching up, that I'm keeping everything flat. You want your block to lay flat. You don't want anything puckering. So you have to make sure you have good tension and that everything works. But this is not hard. And it is really kind of therapeutic fun. And this too, if you just want to sew one block and put it aside for a while, you have your little project box. And it's not a big deal to do that. So here we are. We're just going to sew them all together. Once they're all sewn together, then here is the next part. And this is where the magic starts to happen. You take your ruler and these are four inch bases. So the neutral part is four inches. So I'm now going to cut them into two by two inch blocks. And I just cut it like that. And you can see that some of the centers are bigger, some are smaller, but this is going to work. It makes the most darling miniature, which can be used as a table topper or a side table thing or a doll quilt or whatever you want to use it for. And I like to make wall hanging walls and have miniatures all over them. Cut these in quarters. I stack them with their friends and put them in my project bin. And then I'm going to show you the little trick. You want to cut behind the front part of the circle. And the reason we do this is so that there will be less bulk in the seams because there will be four fabric pieces in the junction. I'm just trimming the circles. I trim them at different sizes. I don't like them all at the same size, but you trim them however. And you can see on the back of this one that it just helps it to press better and to lay flatter. It's kind of fiddly, but it's worth it. And it's kind of fun. Use really sharp scissors. These are my small Kai scissors and they work really well for this. I'm sure you have scissors that will work at your house. Even though this quilt is scrappy, I like to keep my pieces together so that I can manage where I put them. So I'm taking one of each quarter block, which is its own block now, and I'm playing with patterns. So I'm going to show you two or three different pattern layouts. You've seen the one that I did that other quilt in, but I want you to see that this is limitless. You can make this so fun. It reminds me of a drunkard's path and anything you can do with the drunkard's path, you can do with this pattern. I kind of love how this looks. I was really tempted to sew it together like this. It's just so happy and so fun. So I'm going to show you a couple more layouts and you literally are not limited by anything except your imagination. These are the most fun to play with and when you're doing miniatures you really can play. I love it when you make them into just circles and even though they aren't exact they're so beautiful. Check this one. There's just no limit. You get to play and play with these blocks until you're you're ready to quit playing and sew them together. This is the one that I did before and because I want you to see it in two colorways I am going to choose and sew this together this way. I laid them in opposite facing diagonals. You get to choose which way you want your diagonal to go. I also quilted them completely different from each other. To make bigger blocks just size these blocks up and be creative and have fun. It's so fun to make this pattern. I hope you get to play with it. Stay merry and creative.